Hey guys, today I'm filming my July favorites and product updates for 2018 and I actually do not have any beauty favorites to talk about today. I've got random favorites and I do have my product updates, but that's it. And that's really sad to me. And I think there's a couple different reasons why I don't have any beauty favorites. One of them is the fact that I'm just wearing makeup to film. I have not found a job yet and I've just been putting makeup on for filming videos, which is still fun and exciting in a sense, but for my palette of the month, it's gonna be the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette, and you guys will be seeing that video soon. And because there are so many shades in that palette, I've only been using that palette all month long, and there isn't one look that I've absolutely adored and felt like super excited about. I didn't feel like anything was super unique that I created, but of course I'm not the most creative when it comes to eye looks. So that held me back, I think, from finding a lot of favorites is just like I was only using that palette this month. Also, I'm currently doing two Project Pans, the Project 10 Pan Summer Edition and the Finish 13 by Halloween. And I had never done two projects at the same time like that, so it's been pretty overwhelming this month. And I also try not to put multiple of the same product in projects I'm working on. For instance, in both of those projects, I have a primer, I have powders, and I try not to double up because then it's hard to work on both things. But I started the summer a month earlier and the Finish 13 by Halloween project goes for four months. So I was thinking, okay, I've got enough time. And really at the beginning of this month, basically until the last couple of days, I've been feeling like, what did I get myself into? This is a lot. I don't know how much progress I'm gonna be able to make. I can't wear all these things at the same time. And I'm really excited because over the past three days or so, I have finished or hit my goal on items from both of those projects. And that is making me feel so much more hopeful. And in my monthly makeup basket video, you guys will see the products that I'm currently using from both of those projects. And I'm feeling really, really happy about that. Also, this goes into my product updates. I have been testing out the ColourPop No Filter products all month long, but I just got in the matte primer and their setting spray, so I decided to push back my review a couple weeks so I can let you guys know my thoughts on those things as well. But I have so many complexion products in my project pan that I wasn't using so that I could focus on the ColourPop products, but I think I have a really good sense of my thoughts on most of the ColourPop products, so I'm taking about a week break from using those so I can use some of my project pan items. Then right after we move, which is gonna be in just a couple days, I will start using the ColourPop stuff again. So I was not really feeling excited about makeup, but I'm feeling a lot more positive for August and I think I can make good progress on my items and it will make me feel more excited about makeup again in general. So really long intro, but that's why I don't have any beauty favorites. And now for the product update. So I'll be updating you guys on all the things I tried out in my most recent seven first impressions. I'll have that video linked up in the card. So in that video, I did show you my first impressions on the ColourPop No Filter Foundation, some new shades to me of the concealer, the loose powder and the pressed powder. So if you want to hear my initial thoughts, make sure you check that video, but I do not want to give you any more thoughts today. I'm going to make you guys wait a couple weeks until I post my full review video. But if you follow me on Instagram, I did post an Instagram live using the products, giving you a little bit of my current thoughts on them. And then I gave some wear test updates in my Instagram story. So some of you guys may have seen that. So anyway, you will have my thoughts coming soon. I can tell you that there are some things I don't like at all other things that I quite enjoy, but nothing I'm obsessed with. So I'll just give you that much for now. So then for the other products that I tested, the first is the Milani Baked Bronzer in the shade Dolce. And this is a bronzer that has a bit of a sheen to it. It was a really warm toned shade, which I was afraid of, but it actually wasn't super pigmented on my skin. And I actually ended up returning it because I found it to be really flaky and dusty, which is so weird because I do have two of the Milani matte baked bronzers that were limited edition. They're amazing. They're holy grail to me. I love the colors and the formula is so amazing. But this one was 
hella dusty and I have other bronzers in my collection that I like the formula better and the shade so I decided to return that so it's not something that I would recommend to you guys I much prefer the physicians formula butter bronzer for a drugstore option and then the blush I had tested was the pretty vulgar make them blush in the shade hush blush this is such a pretty color it's like a peachy rose on my skin tone this pool is definitely a little bit more warm this is a matte blush which i love it is super duper pigmented so you only need a little bit and it does blend to the skin quite nicely i am really happy that they sent this product out in boxy charms i know they also sent out a really really bright hot pink my friend sierra had given this to me it's a really nice blush great quality it's a beautiful color however I would not spend the full price on this. The packaging feels extremely cheap. Drugstore packaging feels better quality than this. I think it looks pretty, but it's way too expensive for what it is. So if you got it in BoxyCharm and you haven't used it yet, pull it out and try it because it's a good product. I'll be excited to reach for it, but it's definitely not something I would buy full price from Sephora. The other thing I had tried was the Kat Von D Metal Crush Eyeshadow in Thunderstruck. I was using that as a highlighter. I am wearing this today. It's a beautiful white gold shade. This is so beautiful on the skin. It gives a really intense glow, but it doesn't look too powdery. The formula melts it in with my skin really nicely. I definitely love this product. I recommend it. I will be reaching for it quite often. And I just saw this and the other shades of the Metal Crush eyeshadows at TJ Maxx for $6. And this is still available on the Sephora website for 13 bucks. So go to your TJ Maxx and look for these if you're interested. I know a lot of people are boycotting Kat Von D currently because of the anti-vax controversy. But if you are interested, check out your TJ Maxx. Unfortunately, mine only had this shade in the black color because some of the other shades in that line are really beautiful. But anyway, as a highlighter, I think this is a great formula and a really, really awesome shade for my skin tone. And the last item I tested out in that video is the Huda Beauty Coral Obsessions palette. I am wearing this on my eyes today. So you get nine shadows, two shimmers in the corner, and seven mattes. And I'm wearing all mattes on my eyes today. In the first impression, I used one of the shimmers and some of the more wearable shades in this palette but today I wanted to use the bold shades and I've been able to test out all these shadows except this shimmer and actually I think I've used both of the oranges but that shimmer is the only one I haven't used but I love the formula of the other shimmer that I tried it was super pigmented and creamy went on the eyes looked very very metallic the mattes as you can see wearing them today I think look stunning. These do have some powdery kick up, but it's not too bad. These blend out really, really nicely on the eye. And I'm wearing like an intense red in my outer corner. It blended really nicely, but it was disappointing for me that even though these had so much kick up, they weren't initially crazy pigmented on the eye. For me, when I use my Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette and I dip into those matte shades, it puts a lot of pigment on my eye and then it's also blendable. And that's what I prefer. This, I felt like I had to build up the matte shadows in my crease and I don't love that. It isn't bad because I have had other palettes that were like that that I really didn't like but this one I think does build to give really nice pigment I think I need probably like two layers instead of just the one so same as what I said in my first impression I would give these shadows like a B plus rating because the shimmers are amazing and I like the mattes they're not patchy which is impressive and they blend nicely I just wish they were a little bit more pigmented from the jump but I am really happy I have this in my collection I'm interested in a few more of her shades but I don't know if I'm dying to get them and own them, but I am happy that I have this one. Then I wanted to update you guys on a couple nail polishes that I talked about in my monthly makeup basket. And they were some polishes I was testing to see if they were dupes. And the first two would be the Wet n Wild Wild Shine Polish, and she sells. These polishes are only a dollar. And OPI, I got myself into a jambalaya. And I do have a manicure Monday picture wearing both of these on my nails and I'll insert that here. So as you can see in the picture these look almost identical. You really can tell more of a difference in person than you can in the picture and when I had just 
done one coat of polish of each of the shades, that's when you can really see the difference. It seemed like the OPI was a little bit more pink while the Wet n Wild had a little bit more of a peachy quality to it. They both took three coats to be opaque, but I felt like the OPI still had a couple bald spots in them and a little patchy, which is a huge bummer. That definitely could have been my application of it because usually three coats with OPI is good for me. And I think this is amazing because OPI polishes are around $10, but I have seen this shade at TJ Maxx if you're interested. And the Wet Weld's only a dollar. It performs just as well, and the colors are almost spot on, which is so funny. I've never noticed until now that these are basically dupes because I've had this one for a couple years and this one as well. So I just thought that was a really funny. I wanted to share that with you. And then my next two polishes I compared to one another would be Julie G's Tropical and Berry M Jelly Polish and Greenberry. I used to think this was the most unique polish in my entire collection. And then a little while ago, I had won a giveaway from Jessie's Girl and Color Clutch, and they sent me a ton of Julie G nail polishes. And I had actually posted this manicure Monday on my Instagram, which I will insert that picture now. And these polishes look more different in the bottle than they do on the nail. I think the Jolie G looks a little bit more blue and the Berry M looks a little bit more green. And I have a couple other Berry M jelly polishes and I don't like the formula. They take forever to dry, they're very thick and they can look really streaky. Well, this one performs better than the other two that I had. The Jolie G one is a matte finish. I do not like matte finishes. I put a clear coat on top, which helps a little bit, but matte polishes seem to really show patches. And the Jolly G also chipped quicker because it's a matte polish. And my nails especially do not like matte polishes, but I did put the same top coat on them. So I actually prefer the Berry M, which I did not think I would because as I said, I don't love this formula, but I thought it performed better than the Julie G, so I did want to share that with you. If you are not able to get your hands on the Berry M because this is a brand that's sold overseas and we aren't really able to get it easily in the United States, and I think I heard this was discontinued. But if you're interested in this shade, the Jolie G Tropical is the closest thing I've ever seen. So I would say it's worth checking out if you want this color, but for me, I'm gonna use the Berry M over the Jolie G. So those are all of my product updates. Now for my random favorites, I have a couple songs and I will have all the music videos linked down below if they're available. The first is Better Now by Post Malone. This has been out for a little while, but I've been forgetting to mention it and I love it every single time I hear it on the radio. I really like his music in general. I think he has a really great voice and his songs are really catchy. Then I have two songs by XXX Tenacion. I don't know if I'm saying that right. That is a rapper who was recently within I think the past two months murdered and he has had some songs that were obviously out before them but some songs that released after that and there have been two songs that are a little bit more slow songs that I really love called Changes and Sad. I will have them both linked down below. One of them it's ironic is not the right word but like it's a funeral scene and that one came out right after he was murdered so that was kind of odd timing, but both of those songs are so good. I do not know that much about him as a person. I've heard some really not good things. I also heard that he has very, very offensive music. These are the two songs that I've heard and I've really enjoyed. So check those out if you're interested. And then I have some TV shows that I've been watching from Netflix. And the first one would be Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. And I've seen a couple episodes when this show first came out years ago. And then Netflix revamped it and it is a Netflix original. They have two different seasons. I think they both have eight episodes. It's amazing. I love it. I love all of the guys. Jonathan is my favorite because he's just so over the top. But I love Anthony a lot as well. He's so handsome and I love him so much. I love all of the guys. They are such a great group and all the different people that they work with just have amazing stories and are amazing people and it is such a good show. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for like a really nice heartfelt show and it's also very entertaining and funny and you learn stuff and it's just really cool. And then I finally, finally watched season two of 13 Reasons Why. 
I loved this season so much more than the first one. It felt so much more interesting to me, but um, I did want to mention my thoughts on the final episode of the show. So I feel like they need to have a much bigger warning for the episode first off because they do a pretty good job at the beginning and end of every episode having some kind of a warning and the last two episodes did have a decent warning but like you know I see that I'm like whatever because I've seen a lot of things on that show that haven't really bothered me too much and in the final episode I don't want to spoil it but I want to warn you because it was so graphic I actually lost my mind and I don't think you need to see what happens. I just think you need to know what happens because it sets up how season three is going to begin. So I'm not going to tell you who it happened to. Message me if you want to know more of the information. I'm sure you can look it up on YouTube. But one of the characters is very, very, very violently beat up and sodomized. And it is the worst thing I've ever seen. I have seen a lot of stuff and that is honestly the most traumatic thing I've ever seen in my life. I was screaming, crying, going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like I, I had my hands in my mouth like this. Oh my God, oh my God. I was drooling all over the place. Like I am not being dramatic. I have had a couple of freakouts like that before. So I know what that was like and I absolutely lost my mind. I was thinking about it all night long. I was thinking about it the next day. It is still so vivid in my mind what happened. I've never seen something so graphically traumatizing and I just can't get over it. I don't think it was necessary to put it in the show. I'm pretty pissed off about it. I think they could have explained what happened or you could have seen him coming out of the bathroom, but not like what actually happened. They could have told you without showing you. I understand it gives a certain effect and it certainly made me feel a certain way for how this person reacted afterwards. I was totally with him like, you know, and it does set up season three. So I wonder, I'm sure there is somewhere, it gives you a timestamp of where you can freaking fast forward because honestly, you do not need to see that. You just need to know what happened. I literally cannot even remember what happened in that season except for that scene because it is like, just took over the whole show for me. The season was very good. I know that. And it's just, if you guys have seen it, let me know. I think other people didn't react as intensely as I did to that, but that is, like I said, the most violently traumatizing thing I've ever seen in my life. And like right now I'm like sweating thinking about it. So it's a really good show, but. And then I also finally watched season two of Riverdale. So I thought this was a Netflix original show, so I took my time watching it, and then I found out it was on TV. And I have Xfinity On Demand, where you can watch past episodes. Well, I'm so far behind, it wouldn't let me go back to episode one, so I had to wait till the whole thing was done, and it was on Netflix. There are 22 episodes in season two. I've never seen a show like a regular show with that many episodes, but it was so good. Like I binged the crap out of that. I watched it in like three days. It is so good. I also think the season two of Riverdale was much better than season one because there was so much going on. It was very, very, very interesting. So definitely recommend that show as well. Then I have a YouTube video that I really enjoyed this month. It was My Cat's Pick My Makeup by Thomas Halbert. To be honest, I only watch these videos to see people's pets. I don't find them that entertaining, but Thomas did it the best way because he would choose like three of his favorite foundations, three of his least favorite foundations, and then he put treats on each of the products to get the pets to participate. And then he had two cats who they would take in turns. He put them on the table, they picked one. And that was so smart. That way the animal's not just picking the product that's the closest to them when it's helping them participate. So the way he did it, I thought was so smart, the way he had the cats pick the products and also the way he gave them the options of products, putting things he did and did not like. And it was so good. I really think he put a lot of thought into that video and I love the way that he did it. Then the last thing is a YouTube channel. It is the channel from Hannah Louise Poston, if I'm saying that right. I came across her channel, I think maybe through an empties and she is on a complete no buy for the entire year of 2018, which is incredible. She has so much willpower. I would never be able to do that. I couldn't do a a one month no buy. I can I can tell you that. So many people doing no buy July. Props to them because I couldn't. And she's not buying anything all year long unless she needs to replace something. And I love her channel. Her videos are so awesome and like her essence and 
just how like chilled and laid back she is. I just love her channel so much. I'll have it linked down below. So this somehow managed to be a long video even though I had no makeup favorites to talk about. But anyway, I would love to know your thoughts on my product update items. I would love to know what things you love this month and let me know what TV shows you're watching. I'm looking for some new things to watch on Netflix and if you've watched any of the shows I mentioned, I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.